welcome to another episode of Holistic Healing. I'm Helen Chin Liu, and I'm here with my, my co-host, Sam McCartland. Sam and I have been having so much fun with these shows. I think we've taped like, I would say, at least a half a dozen, and here we are, and we still have a lot of subjects to cover. So today, Sam and I are going to talk about chakras, and what are they, and how they're going to help you where the, we'll talk a little bit about imbalances and we're going to give you some health tips and how to incorporate into your life that you will feel so much better. Anyways, so Sam, do you want to start off and talk about what are chakras? I would love to. Thank you so much, Helen, and hello, everybody. We're going to talk about chakras today, and a lot of people are thinking, I've never heard this word. Where did it come from? Why do I need to know about it? So hopefully we'll be able to address some of your questions today. Chakras are the greatest way to think about chakras is that they're little spinning wheels. Now everybody is pretty much familiar with the idea of the disk drives in our computers. Mm -hmm. You know, like a little DVD yeah. or a little mm -hmm. CD that spins around. Mm -hmm. And what happens is throughout our lives as we're experiencing life, the chakras that we have in our systems record every moment of our lives. And different pieces of information go to different disk drives that we have in our system. Hmm. So you may not have a conscious memory of something, but your body has recorded it and stored the information. And the information then gets downloaded into your own personalized program. And this is the, the kind of thing that motivates you or restricts you as you go through your life, is this recorded history that we have. It's recorded on a cellular level. It's recorded on an energetic level. It's recorded in our mental level. It's recorded in our conscious and our subconscious levels. And so we have a great poster here behind us, the chakras, that lay out Ooh. for us geographically where the chakras are in the body and what their related colors are, what the points of the body that are connected to the chakras are, and how they're in our systems. And what's so important for us to understand is, is that we can actually work with the chakras. Mm. It's another tool that we can use to be mindful of how we're running energy in our body, how we are feeling in our body because the chakras are connected to the organs in the body. And it's just another great tool that we can use to feel empowered about our own health, our own wellness, and our own lives. You know, just I was just looking at this chart. Maybe one of the things we could do is explain where the chakras are, and may and um, and talk about some of its association. Do you feel like doing a little demonstration to, about the colors and where they're located? Oh, I'd love to. I love this poster. First of all, I think it's a terrific piece of art. The artist has really put a lot of time, effort, and detail into it. And when we talk about chakras, most people are familiar with the seven main chakras that are in the system. But the truth of the matter is that there are hundreds of chakras. There are chakras in the hands, which is why when you rub your hands together like mm. this and you create friction and you pull your hands slightly apart, apart, you can feel an energetic field in there. And you really, it's being sensed by the chakras that are in the palms. Oh, I know that. As a reflexologist, I'm sure you know we have chakras in the bottom of our feet, too. Definitely. I, I, thought, I always thought that uh, I knew that there were seven main chakras that's located from your spine, from your tailbone to the top of your head, but I always thought there was only 21 minor ones that's located in your palms of your hands, um, various part of the upper body and down to your knees to your feet, but I didn't realize there were hundreds of them. There are, and the more work that we do with them, apparently, it's sort of like planets. The more we, mm. we, we seek, the more we find. And so people are writing now about the eighth chakra, which is above the head in the auric field. Doreen Virtue, who's a very famous angel person, she talks about the ear chakras. And so they're just, you know, great pieces of information. And the more we learn about ourselves, I think we are the eternal mystery. Mm. Uh, you know, we always thought with the Star Trek days that space would be the final frontier. I really think that people are going to be the final frontier mm. because there's so much about ourselves we just don't know. And as, you know, I've said to so many of my friends, we're all just so fascinating. We are. And one of the things, like you, when I incorporate reflexology, I also um, am also looking at which energy, up, which chakra the energy is blocked at. So we, so this way, I could give tips to the uh, client on how 
to move the energy through the chakra so this way he or she could have a better healing experience. So would you like to go over the chart a little bit and just talk about the chakras and where they're located and, and maybe talk about what happens if one of the chakra malfunctions or, or gets blocked or clogged. It's kind of like Drano when your drain gets clogged and, and now you're thinking, how do I unclog this energy? And in a way, you know, we could talk about maybe in the end, it's so easy to unblock the chakra. Exactly. So chakras, and we'll go through them shortly in a moment, chakras are either balanced, mm. deficient, or excessive. And with the goal plan, obviously, as in all things in life, is balance. We would like to have a balanced chakra system. Because when they're deficient, it can cause behavioral issues, it can cause physical symptoms and illness, and the same thing if it's excessive. And so the goal really is to bring the whole system into balance and alignment. But how, how do they become unbalanced to begin with? Fears, anxiety, worry, trauma, all of the things I that we stress. talk about in all of the healing modalities with all of the tools that we've been talking about and will continue to talk about in the future is how do we bring our lives into balance? Because the obvious end result is we don't feel well. We no, feel out of true. whack. We don't have enough energy to be impassioned and enthusiastic about our lives. Sometimes we feel depleted. Sometimes we feel like we're on autopilot, and that's not really feeling good either. Sometimes we feel all jazzed up and angered up and juiced mm. up and revved up, yeah. and then that's a sign of excessive, right? Because we've yeah, got exactly. too much juice flowing well, through the that's, system. Well, that's the way I felt today. Right, be, be, right before we were going to tape these shows, I was overly... Um, of an excessive, the, the, I could feel the energy really rushing through me. And then so I'm trying to get myself here on time, get all my materials ready. I could feel my head start to spin. So I knew my chakras were being flo flooded. Uh, another um, demonstration that I always saw, talk to clients about, which I, which I mentioned in one of my previous show, a lot of people end up holding their breath or they breathe very shallowly. So what happens is the energy starts to become very, very sluggish. Because how I really describe your energetic field, if your energy is flowing correctly, your body should be like a tunnel. The energy should flow in and out. And, and I was wondering, have you noticed too, if when you're feeling well, everything just feels so incredibly right and every nothing could go wrong? It's like when you're cooking on all cylinders is a great way to look mm. at it. Or yeah. when you're in the zone. In you the know, zone. Oh, you mean like runners who, who are in the zones a lot of times? Well, like just regular people. Like when your day is flowing well, nothing's really out of whack, nothing's really dragging you down. You've got that nice balance kind of going. You're in the zone, and it's so much easier when your day is manifesting that way because things come to you naturally, you have creative ideas, you don't seem to have any accidents or detriments towards mm. your day. But you know, when you're not feeling well, it's like when you get out of bed in the morning and you stub your toe, and it almost starts a whole cycle yes, of things right. going down. Then you know you you put a your your thumb through your pantyhose. You get stuck in traffic. You know it just is like the domino effect. And by yes. the end of the day, you're just like, what happened to me today? You know when I went to bed last night, I felt great. I got a good night's sleep. But you just got off to the wrong start in the morning, yeah. and it just becomes a whole cycle. But when you're in the zone, you know it's like you don't even know you're in the zone until you step out of the zone and you feel kind of, oh, what happened there? And then you have a great appreciation of like, oh, I want that again. Mm. I want to be balanced. I want to be in that juiciness of life where things are going well and I'm feeling good yeah. and it's a good day and I'm feeling, feeling the flow. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the other reasons why it's kind of important to pay attention to what's going on with the whole system. And our bodies are wonderful pieces of equipment and they're also wonderful guides and tools to us because we get so busy in the course of the day. We're busy doing this, busy doing that, getting our to-do lists done, and we're not even really paying attention. And so it's very easy for the system then to just Shut get down. out of whack. Yeah, and I find that it shuts. But the thing too, what a lot of people notice, I've noticed, they get so anxious, they override 
the messages that are being sent to the body. So what happens, not only do you end up shutting one chakra down, you end up shut, shutting down a whole series of them. And then before you know it, I find, like in, in cases that I've experienced, you're spinning out of control. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about the chakras. All right. Okay. How are we doing on time? Um, this is the whole system, and the first chakra is basically this red area here where we come right up to about here at the lower point of the lower pelvis into the pubic bone. And this is the first chakra, the color is red, and it's about the body, it's about manifesting in the physical world. And the next chakra is this orange area here, and this is where all of our feelings are. Mm. You know when you have a gut instinct, this is what they're talking about. You feel it in the body. Right. Yes, and that's and I find that um, women who come and have a lot of, for example, fertility issues, usually they're very emotional because at, they're at the point too, especially if they've been trying to conceive for years, mm. they're very emotional. So what happens is that shock becomes excessive and they're trying to quiet it down. They have a very difficult time just to rebalance that energy in that area. Exactly, and the second chakra is the area of the reproductive system, mm -hmm. both in men and women. And so you're talking about somebody who's just trying to conceive, and so all of their energy is going there. Mm -hmm. It's their focus of their attention because they're trying to reproduce, and so now you have an excessive situation because there's too much energy, exactly. even from the brain going to that area exactly. and they become so anxiety ridden which is why how many times have women heard oh just relax and it'll happen there's a lot of wisdom in that statement that's very true because the body will try to heal itself and be an active player in the role of procreation yeah but um, the point is even though you hear that statement but what does that consist of of relaxing and one of the things that um, we'll talk about after the break is just trying to do some breathing exercises mm -hmm. to get you to body to relax and also get to feel, your, you could actually feel your different chakras. Great. So the third chakra is up here in the solar plexus area and the color is yellow like the sunshine. And this is our sense of self. And you know if you hear criticism, somebody says mm. something negative to you, it's just like a knife just cutting you right in the middle of, of the gut there. This is your level of self-esteem. And so when you hear criticism, of course, it impacts your level of sense of self and your self-esteem about yourself and how you view yourself in the world. And people will always tend to take on criticism personally. And this is the area of the body where we can feel that yes. physically. And and this is the chakra that records that information. Yes. And then again, the people who come and they have a lot of stomach issues or they feel like there's a lot of the toxins are not moving through their body or they're starting to have issues with that di yeah, digestive um, intestinal, usually that energy there is blocked. So mm. those are the people who feel like they have no control of their life. Mm. Yeah, and you know, the Italians call it agita, and it's like uh -huh. that burning sensation that just is cooking in here. Yes, and it's it, stewing. And it's also the energy gets stuck in the diaphragm, too. Yeah. So, the reflux. Butterf reflux, butterflies, anxiousness. Yeah, exactly. And so the body is the great tool to us that, hey, something's going on here. You need to pay attention. Yeah. And so, if you're feeling these things, it's like, well, what just happened? Who did I just speak to? Who did I just have a disagreement with on the telephone? You know, when you feel these sensations in your mm. body, it's a call for you to pay attention to what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you know that if you don't pay attention to things, eventually they can develop into bigger problems. Yes. And so this is why our body is our best tool in our toolbox, because it has so much just inner wisdom and knowing, and it's a great communicator. So, well, you know what, let's, let's take a break right now and then we can do the top. And we'll go talk, do the yeah. top, and then we'll just focus on, on some exercises where we could try to relieve some of the tension in our chakras. So go and have yourself a snack, and we'll be back shortly. Thank you.
Welcome back, and here we are with Sam and I. We're going to continue with our education about the chakras. I, I find it so interesting, plus it gives me a little refresher. Sam and I um, basically have had, we've gone through extensive training to learn about the shock, three years of it, and it's been uh, a very fascinating journey. So Sam, we're going to continue because we talk, just talked about the um, third chakra, and now we're going to talk about the fourth chakra. Excellent. The third, first three chakras that we talked about, the first, second, and third chakra, are really the building blocks of our lives because mm. they have to do with everything that is physical in oh, our and lives. And survival. And survival, creativity, money, power, and sex, self-esteem. And so now we're transiting up into the heart chakra. And of the seven, the heart is the one that's in the middle. And it's often called the rainbow bridge. And this artist has illustrated why that's called the rainbow bridge so beautifully because you can see all of the colors of the chakra system here in the heart chakra this is you know people think this is where feelings are but feelings are really down in this lowest chakra that we talked about a few minutes ago the heart chakra is about relationships mm. the color of the heart chakra is green some people sense it as pink mm -hmm. you know and Valentine's Day is coming up you'll see a lot of pink hearts floating around out there so this is the bridge between the lower three chakras and the upper three chakras. And it's about how we come into relationship with other people in our lives. And so the first three chakras are about, it's all about me. And now the fourth chakra is making that transition to others in our world and how we relate to them. But don't you also find too that the heart chakra is also um, not just love that you have for others, but what about the love you have for yourself? Absolutely. A lot of, you know, the self-esteem part here in the third chakra is about personal power, feeling empowered about living your life. It's mm. not about power over people. It's just your own sense of worthiness and power. Mm. And so when you get into the heart chakra, it's about loving yourself and making that move out into the bigger world. So again, this is why it's considered the bridge because it connects the lower three chakras that are about me, myself, and I, and now it's gonna connect the upper chakras with us in the world. Mm. So one of the things I wanna note that I noticed too when clients come with um, issues around their heart chakra, they usually have things going on in respiratory issues, could be breast issues, upper back issues. So when the energy is blocked there, um, especially children with, uh, let's say, bronchitis, various respiratory, then that tells me that there's something going on in their life that they either feel like they're not connecting with mm -hmm. others or perhaps they feel disconnected with themselves. And isn't, isn't it interesting the language that we actually use to describe certain things in our life? Yeah. How many people do you know who have had to go in for bypass surgery yes. because they have something in their heart that's blocked? Yeah. The heart is actually, as an organ, is actually representing what's going on in terms of what the heart chakra is experiencing, which it could be a block in being able to express love and emotions with people in your life. Uh, expressing happy feelings as well as some anger issues too. You know, people tend to shut down because we're taught that expressing anger isn't a good thing. Right. And, and so. And especially in our society, we've been taught to swallow our anger. So what you don't address will go away by itself. Exactly. And it, just as you were talking, I was taking a hard swallow thinking about that. And it goes right here from your fifth chakra. Mm -hmm. Where does it go? It goes boosh, right in here into the fourth chakra and it gets stuck there. You can actually feel when you're swallowing your words, mm, when you're biting your yes. tongue, when you're holding back your emotions, where's it gonna go? It drops into the next chakra, which is heart chakra. And this is why a lot of people have heart problems. Would you also say, would you associate, associate that with also with breast cancer perhaps? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, our breasts are a form of communication with children. When, when a new mother is bonding with that child and feeding that child and supplementing that child with the milk that comes out of the breasts, this is a real big emotional thing. I mean, women talk about it's one of the most intimate acts that they'll That's ever true. engage in in their lives. And so if you're holding back emotions and holding back your words, where is it going to go? Again, it's just like as a bottle and it drops to the next level and it can get stuck in these tissues. 
That's true, and I'm just thinking about even those women who have difficulties in breastfeeding and they can't produce enough milk. So you, you think about what is it that they are fearful of and why they, and perhaps why they can't give. Yeah, it might be an indicator of, of holding themselves back mm. and not being able to make that connection. Mm -hmm. So this is the fifth chakra here in the throat area. We were just talking about speaking our truth, you know, which is a common phrase that we hear in the media these days. It's also the center of creativity. Mm. You know, you have to give voice to creation. Even in the Bible, they talk about God spoke and the word became. Mm. And so this is our creativity center here. And so it's important to have that energy open and flowing so that we're able to manifest things in our life that we want to create. It could be a new job, it could be a project on the job, mm -hmm. it could be uh, starting a club of people who have similar interests, it could be soccer club for the kids, whatever it is, this is your, your center of creativity. Well, I've noticed too that the people who have issues with their throat chakra, they're, used, they're, they're clenchers, they clench their jaws so tight and it works all the way up into their jaws and do you find that it also goes up into the ears? Absolutely, this is all connected and people who are clenching are holding in, holding back, holding on. And so it impacts the TMJ area. Yeah. This, is, this keeps dentists very busy. Yes, but, and don't you also find too, because I, I know that when I was under a lot of stress when I had a corporate job, not only was I clenching, but I could feel the pain radiating down into my arms, my shoulders, my arms, and in, into my hands. At the time, I did not under, have any understanding of chakras or energy medicine, and I couldn't understand why the pain was traveling. Well, as you've been so wonderful in pointing out to us on your session with reflexology, it's all connected. It's all connected. You know, it doesn't happen in just a little section of our bodies. It's all connected. And one of the other issues that I've found challenging for myself is it, the clenching thing mm. doesn't stop when you go to bed. No. You know, and the dentist will say to you, oh, we need to get you a night guard because you're clenching your oh, teeth yeah, the at mouth night. Gone. Yeah. Oh, what I've seen even clients come in, they have, they clench so much in their sleep, they even chew through their mouth guard. Yeah. So the first thing I think about, what is it that they want to say, but they can't. So they right. have swallowed their words so that energy is all stuck in their mouth. Right. So the next chakra that we're going to look at is right up here. It's called the third eye. And this is the area that gives us insight, mm -hmm. intuition. It's also the mind. So we have the tug of war that goes on between monkey mind which mm. is busy, 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 all those crazy thoughts that we have going on 24-7, even in our sleep, and the ability to see ourselves in the world. If you've got a very closed, narrow chakra in this area, you're going to have great difficulty in seeing how you correspond to the world, where your place in the world is, how you connect with other people, and seeing the big picture in mm -hmm. life. Yes. And again, the people that I see that have what I consider um, third, third eye issues, the people with migraine headaches, yes. they, they, are, they are the overthinkers. They think to the point where it actually hurts. Yes. So it, that pain radiates all, all through their head. So trying to get them to relax is one of the hardest things to do. Yes, the stress of the people who are in their heads all the time thinking, um, they're very busy doing, they love to-do lists, mm. which is to me very satisfying when you get to check the things off on the to-do list. But if you don't have a way to disengage that part of your body, which is your brain, it goes on overload. And the stress, um, just the contractions in the, around the, the mind, around the head, can um, restrict the blood flow That's and this right. triggers headaches. And, and I feel really bad for those people who have con chronic migraines. Yeah and they cannot get out of their heads. They can't disconnect. They can't disconnect. They don't unplug. Yes, exactly. And that's why a lot of great mindfulness techniques, um, meditation, yoga, exercise even, can be a great way to disengage the mind mm -hmm. because you're either disengaging the mind through meditation 
through exercise, you disengage the mind by putting more energy into the physical thing. If, if you're a runner, you're going to be paying attention to where you're running, and it helps to kind of clear the mind. A lot of people really love running because it just helps them to check out for a while, mm -hmm. and it's almost like they're leaving their thoughts behind them as they're running down the road. Mm. So that's a, a great tool for people to use who yeah. are having too much energy yes. in that part of the head. Do you want to talk a little bit about the summer shock, and then we'll talk about tips on how to move the energy to unclog the traffic in within? Excellent. The seventh chakra is located up here in the top of the head. The color that's associated with it is purple or violet. And it's right up here in the top of the head, and it really is our connection to the divine. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people in the world who have decided for one reason or another that they're not going to be connected to the divine that they don't believe in God or a higher source, mm -hmm. that what you see here, this is it, and you know, when you're done, you're done. And so with people who have this chakra closed off, I find that they have closed themselves off to higher thoughts. Hmm. They may have great thoughts intellectually here, but their association with even the bigger, bigger, infinite picture is diminished because they've actively chosen through choice to close this chakra down. Does it have to be associated with a religion, or does it, because you talked about the divine, so most people, I, I would imagine, would consider divine associated with an organized religion. Well, in my, in my little world today, my opinion is, is that religion is when a group of people come together and they have common belief system, they mm -hmm. may have common rituals and practices, and they come together in a sense of community to express and share those. Spirituality is the individual. It's almost like the difference between psychology and sociology. Hmm. In psychology, we're talking about the individual and the inner workings of the individual. In sociology, we're talking about how the individual connects with others hmm. as a group. And so That's I think of religion and spirituality in the same terms. So you can be a spiritual person and have a spiritual practice and do that independently all by yourself. You can also reach out to other like-minded individuals and come together as a group to practice whatever that path mm. is for you, whatever that tradition is. And when you come together as a group, it's more about the religion piece. Yes. Well, one of the things I was just thinking is if I feel like, for example, my energy system feels clogged or my chakras, what I do a lot of things to make sure that I am, first of all, I connect in with my body. I just end up focusing on my breathing. I just find that so helpful. But one of the things, for example, to get everything flowing correctly, I become active. That's what I use to move my chakras and keep them open. So I like to bike ride quite a bit. And as you know, Sam, as you call me at 10.30 at night time, sometimes I'm still riding that bike at 10.30. People always ask me, how do you do that? Can you still sleep? I say, yeah, I still could sleep. It doesn't bother me. Mm. So I need physical activity in order to keep my chakras open. And what, what do you do to keep yours open when you start to feel a little bit energetically grungy. Grungy, great grungy. word. <laughs> the, the thing that really works for me all the time is music. To me, mm, music is oh like yes. air. And so if I'm feeling energetically low, drained, lethargic, not very enthusiastic, you can put on a great piece of Motown music, right? Oh, yeah. And get up and boogie. Or if I'm feeling like, oh, I'm on sensory overload, I've got too much to do, it's just too much coming at me, I have too much going on, a beautiful piece of Chopin music would just kind of calm mm -hmm. me down and balance out that flow of energy so that then I'm able to focus better, I'm able to put my to-do list together without feeling stressed and overloaded. So for me, it's music. Well, w I did a show uh, about a year ago, and my co-host, Deborah Basha, who is a music director, we, we, we talked about music therapy and how music could calm you and take you to a different place in time. And we didn't associate with chakras at the time, but it's such an effective therapy, especially if that, the music you're listening to takes you back to a place in time in your life when you felt freer yeah. or you felt relaxed or just very something that's really joyful. And just doing all these little tips, you know, even focus, and as I mentioned, 
you like music, I like activity, and I like to sit and breathe calmly for a little bit. And I find if, if I sit, I'm just readjusting, I, readjusting the chakras and making sure that they stay open. So basically, what I also teach too, how do you know when a shock is closed? As soon as you're clenching, something hurts, that part of the body, that particular shock has shut down. Mm. By focusing on your breath, you'd be surprised at what a simple tool as taking full breaths could open up that shock again. So if you're stressed, let's say for example, um, you have a huge meeting that you're going to meet your big boss and you're doing a huge presentation and you're in the elevator, and you're getting ready to go. So let, assuming that you have a lot of floors to travel up, but during that minute of travel, you could just focus on your breathing and literally, as you exhale, let that energy expel out of you. You're gonna feel so much better and you will handle that meeting so much easier and with a, with a clearer mind. You know, it's so true because people really don't have an appreciation for how important the breath is. Yes. When we feel stressed, the first thing that most people really will report is shallow breathing. Mm -hmm. And once you deprive your body of that full breath of oxygen, things start to take its toll internally. We need that air in order to help our blood circulate. And when you're shallow breathing, the blood isn't going up to the brain and feeding the brain cells up there that we need in mm -hmm. order to get through that stressful meeting. So the best thing that you can do absolutely is to be mindful of your breathing and bring attention to that and increase what the intake is into your body. Someone told me um, in, uh, years ago that for every breath that you take, regardless if it's deep or shallow, 40% of that oxygen goes to your eyes. It's really? the first thing that gets fed. Really? It's part of our survival mechanism. When we were back in the day with the dinosaurs, we needed to see what was in the bush that was making that noise. rumbling noise yeah. mm -hmm. so that we could decide whether or not we needed to hightail it out of yep. there. Yeah. So 40% of any amount of oxygen you take goes to your eyes. If you're doing shallow breathing, that may not leave a lot left to go to the, rest, the rest of the, of the organs. Body. Oh, that's so fascinating. Mm. Well, anyway, Sam, I want to thank you so much for this episode. I just found it so fascinating. And even though I went through three years of energy medicine school, it's always nice to be refreshed. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, if you have any thoughts and you would like to learn more about various holistic tips, please email me at helen at healingplacemethio.com and we will try to address your questions or even your subject in another show. Thank you and have a good day. Bye-bye. Production support provided by Medfield.tv. Access to our community.